questions we often get asked about is the significance of our zero G indicator. Uh, it may look like we have two, but rest assured we have one. Um, uh, Samantha and I had the uh, honor of uh, allowing our kids to choose our zero G indicator, and uh, so we went to our, our daughters, and um, my daughter chose uh, Zippy the turtle. Uh, it's one of her favorite and oldest uh, stuffed animals, and so uh, we brought uh, we brought Zippy along for uh, for the ride. He has been training with us for months. Uh, we have a photo uh, photo gallery of all the uh, training events that he's attended along with us. And uh, this is Etta. Etta is uh, the way that my uh, older daughter, Kelsey, uh, used to call her because uh, she, in Italian, she would be a small monkey, a scimietta. But when she was small, she could only say Etta, and so that's how we uh, call her. And it's actually the first toy that I bought to her for her before she was even born, so I was very excited that she chose uh, Etta to fly to space with us. It's been awesome, and Julia and um, Kelsey have uh, become good friends, gotten to play a lot uh, over the last uh, few months, so it's been awesome. Uh, there is uh, added significance to these. Uh, they were, it was uh, unsolicited, uh, but the, uh, the zero-G indicator uh, actually has uh, additional meaning to our crew. So as Jessica mentioned, uh, she and I are in the uh, 2017 astronaut class, and our, uh, every class has a nickname, and we were known as the Turtles. So obviously Zippy is very near and dear to our heart as a turtle. Um, Chell's class from 2009 are known as the Chumps or the Chimps, uh, and, uh, which obviously is a monkey. And then uh, Samantha's class from the European Space Agency were known as Shenanigans. And as everybody knows, if you get a turtle, turtle and a monkey together, that is a shenanigan. So that is our single zero-G indicator that we have for, uh, for our mission. 
it's been uh, been amazing being uh, up here again in space. Uh, and one of the most incredible things I've experienced so far it was uh, last night. Uh, we had a couple of burns during our sleep period. With, you know, all of a sudden you see yourself and your sleeping bag pushed in the vehicle because you have a burn. The, the thrusters turn on. So I, I went up and peeked uh, through the little uh, uh, window that we have uh, here on the um, on the hatch, uh, and I saw visually this uh, thruster firings going on. It was like a, a ghost flying behind us, this very, very light glimmer making incredible shapes, and then it became more of an incandescent light, and it was just, just beautiful. And then that, that sound of the thrusters going on, tum, 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 and that display of light was just amazing. <laughs> So uh, obviously for me as a rookie, uh, one of my favorite things is uh, looking out the window. And this view that we have out here right now is just spectacular. We're coming across the Terminator, uh, which is the division between day and night on the Earth. And uh, just the way the horizon uh, and the atmosphere lights up and how it gets accentuated uh, as we come into darkness or come out from darkness is just absolutely amazing. So that is certainly one of my favorite things. And uh, for myself, um, I have to say that uh, uh, launching, um, just the, the sensation of the rocket uh, last night uh, was absolutely amazing, amazing. An incredibly smooth ride um, and just uh, incredibly fun to, to, uh, to feel that uh, acceleration and then uh, the weightlessness after we got into orbit. And uh, we also like uh, the, <laughs> some of the little treats that we uh, get. One of the benefits of being an astronaut is that uh, you get to play with your food, and um, and so we're sharing uh, sharing up here. Today, during um, our um, post-sleep meal, um, farmer took out a bag of um, candy chocolate. Candy what? <laughs> And uh, he offered um, one to each one of us, and uh, Wadi at first didn't want one because she was having, like, breakfast sausage. <laughs> but I'm like, sorry, but that's a rite of passage. You have to grab a candy-coated chocolate uh, with your mouth uh, from me there when you become an astronaut for real and you're in space. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us on uh the uh, Crew Dragon Freedom. Uh, we enjoyed showing you around our uh, our home for the next few hours. Uh, we're looking forward to docking with Space Station and uh, sharing more of uh, our work and uh, um, the the amazing science and research that we have the opportunity to do uh, with you over the coming months. So thanks so much, and uh, Crew Dragon Freedom signing off. And Dragon still navigating autonomously. And should be hearing a call out. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. Mid course correction maneuver complete and nominal. Trajectory converged on waypoint zero. And for the crew, they're they're largely just in a monitor mode. Um, they have the capability to, again, send commands to Dragon, take manual control of the vehicle. Uh, but on a nominal flight, Dragon's flight computers are doing all of the flying, and it's got just a suite of different navigational tools at its disposal, um, inertial measurement units. You've got those Dragon eyes literally bouncing lasers off of the space station. Uh, since we ended the rendezvous mode, we're navigating with what's called relative GPS, so a global positioning system. You've got antennas on the space station, receivers on Dragon that are talking to each other, uh, and we've got that C2V2 uh, set up as well that Kate was discussing, uh, and that's allowing us to send data, video, communications uh, directly between the Dragon, the space station, and the ground. Um, and you're going to hear what's called the big loop, uh, discussed a lot. Uh, up until this point, the core here in Hawthorne's been talking to the Dragon crew on Dragon to Ground. That's that direct communication line. Uh, and the team in Houston talks to the station on Space to Grounds. So we have 
several, we have four of those that they can talk across. When we get into these integrated operations, we tie everybody together. Everybody hears everything big, everybody else family. is saying. <laughs> One big happy family, and we call it the big loop. Um, and so that's what we'll hear all of our comms on for the remainder of the approach. There's the space station. And we're, we're coming up just directly underneath it. So you're, you're looking up at station essentially from Dragon, and that's just outer space directly behind us. And we can see those Draco thrusters around the service section firing. That's pretty spectacular. I love that. And so waypoint zero has been passed. Dragon's now inside 400 meters away from the space station and it's moving up to what's known as waypoint one. And so we can see those thrusters firing. Dragon is essentially doing a flip over to the top side of the station. So it's moving from 400 meters directly below to an area just 220 meters directly above. You can see lots of Draco thruster firings there. Again, these are primarily the service section uh, Draco thrusters that are firing, essentially meaning they are located on the sides of Dragon, as opposed to the forward Draco thrusters, which are uh, located at the top of Dragon, uh, under the nose cone and around the, around the hatch. One meter in closing. And we heard confirmation. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, contact and soft capture complete. Attenuation in progress. And confirmation, soft capture and docking confirmed that time 4.37 p.m. Pacific, 11.37 GMT with the International Space Station flying 261 statute miles over the central Pacific Ocean. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, soft capture ring retraction is in progress. There's our first full view of Dragon. Dragon Freedom attached to the International Space Station. Up next, we are uh, going to begin the hard capture sequence. That's essentially when we are engaging the hooks uh, around the docking mechanism. You're back seeing live views inside Crew Dragon Freedom. You currently see a couple empty suits still in the chairs as the crew are continuing to do preparations to open the hatch and ingress the International Space Station. And Dragon Hatch is open, and they are welcoming the Crew 4 astronauts on board. You see all smiles around as Jessica Watkins, Bob Hines, Samantha Christopher Reddy have ingressed and are hugging all their current Crew 3 crew members. And last one in, we see Commander of Dragon, Chell Lindgren, now entering into the International Space Station.
You're currently looking at all eight crew members of crew three and four together inside the Harmony module, welcoming the new crew aboard. Crew three and crew four will do what's called a direct handover. For the next five days, there'll be two Dragons docked to the International Space Station. Crew three currently set to undock in just about five days from now. Station Houston on Space to Ground three, no response required. Just letting you know, PWD is gonna be down 10 to 15 minutes. Um, sorry for the timing, but... Uh, <laughs> And Chell, I'll owe you a beverage when you come back home. Houston Station IMV duct installation is complete. Go for IMV fan activation. Houston copies. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Commander, the floor is yours. Well, welcome on board this space station. As you can see from all the smiles around, we are very happy uh, to have our new crewmates aboard with us. Congratulations uh, really around the world, but to uh, SpaceX and to NASA for pulling off what is still remains a very dangerous activity of launching a human beings into space, but pulled it off just brilliantly. And uh, really dynamic weeks here. We've just uh, said goodbye to our private astronaut mission crewmates. There's a Russian EVA that's going to start here in just a few hours. So we're really happy our Russian crewmates could join us here for this event and uh, we're ready to go to work and, and get started. We couldn't be more excited to be all together here on the space station. Thank you, Tom. And uh, Freedom, uh, Freedom Crew, I wonder if uh, you would be keen to share some of your impressions. Well, we had an absolutely magnificent ride into low Earth orbit on uh, an F-9 booster um, in the Freedom capsule. Uh, it was a really smooth ride, and um, the the G's were pretty amazing. <laughs> Bob, I saw you smile about G's. You know about G's? Yeah, it was uh, pretty amazing, especially, uh, you know, one of the things we used to say in fighters is uh, that, you know, down low, the faster you go faster, the faster you get faster. Uh, this is uh, just the opposite. The higher we got, the faster we went, the faster we got faster. And uh, it was just incredible that uh, that ride, especially on the second stage, uh, it was just uh, really eye-watering. It was awesome. And uh, there's another rookie on board, oh, Samantha. Seasoned astronauts, go ahead. Just wanted to add um, how you know amazing the ride has been, and also how incredible it's been to get back to to space station. It it feels so incredibly familiar, and it's been so heartwarming to be welcomed um, by uh, Crew Three or by our um, Soyuz crewmates, um, and especially uh, Crew Three. Um, our our colleagues have been uh, up with us this last few hours, uh, getting a lot of work done uh, with us uh, as we are getting our space legs so, so uh, heartfelt. Thank you for this uh, wonderful welcome. Jessica, obviously always keen to hear impressions of first-time flyers. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think for, for me, the, the part that was the most awesome of the whole ride was definitely the view. Um, right as we were we were coming in for docking, we uh, started to get suits on and we're start, starting to prepare. And we just, to, just took had, had just enough time to take a last minute look out the window. And we could see the space station kind of off in the distance, but uh, super bright with the solar arrays um, shining again, shining towards us. Um, and the Earth below I mean, is just absolutely gorgeous. So we're super excited to be here and to see uh, more of those amazing views. Any words on the what hey, do you want to take this? Ahead? On the, what do you for the ahead? I'm sorry. Hey, we just wanted to take a quick opportunity here. Um, every time uh, we get to have uh, new colleagues fly into low earth orbit uh, we have a little tradition of awarding them their uh, gold astronaut pins uh, so we want to take that uh, take a moment here to to award the uh, gold astronaut pins to farmer and wadi Congratulations well, we've got, from uh, all the uh, weeks of thanks very much as always an important mo moment to us and uh, I've got weeks of uh, work ahead of us and uh, we'll we'll be handing over operations to a very capable crew four and under the leadership of uh, Oleg here eventually and so we're just really looking forward to the uh, work we're going to be doing together. Uh, here over the next week. I think we're going to be hitting the ground with a lot of science going on right away as well. So uh, this ought to be a lot of fun. Well, very good. Thank you all for your time. I know you're very busy up there. I don't know if there's any uh, closing uh, remarks anybody would like to, uh, to share. Yes, uh, just uh, I think uh, on behalf of all of us, a, a big uh, thank you t to our uh, families. Uh, they were, uh, um, you know, they've been incredibly supporting uh, towards us uh, over the years and the months of training, and also these last weeks uh, uh, leading up to launch. Um, also, you know, with, with some um, unpredictability uh, on our launch date uh, that made it uh, even more challenging, and we, we, you know, we always could enjoy their support. And of course, a uh, big uh, thank you to the, the NASA family, uh, SpaceX, uh, and also from my side, a um, particular thank you to uh, my um, colleagues uh, at the European Space Agency who um, make it possible for us uh, ESA astronauts to fly. And I'm incredibly happy to be here and sharing this uh, experience with uh, my colleague, uh, my ESA colleague, uh, Matthias, uh, as well. <clears throat> Well, thank you. That concludes uh, the event. Uh, station will now be resuming operational audio communication. Godspeed.